Uh, g'day, everybody. It is Gordy's Gas Bags, episode 14. That's 14 for those of you in isolation that have forgotten your mass. Corona still in the background, having an absolute ball, as am I. Now, there has been a huge amount of requests from you lot because you want to know what's going on with the current day crop. Well, this hasn't been about the current day crop, but I thought I could find a happy little medium where I might just find someone who's amongst the current day crop who's from old yes year. I know we had Simone McInnes on, but now we've got none other. Well, let's go to the big dog because she won the grand final last year, Bryony Akel. Hi, Gordy. Thanks for having me. That's a long lost memory. Yeah, good. I know. I know. Grand final feels like years ago. I know. It's funny, isn't it? Like you have a couple of big nights, forget them anyhow because they're too big and then you move on to the next. So that's it. We, we partied hard and then, oh, this has sort of happened and it feels like, oh, we won that thing a long time ago. <laughs> now, listen, you've locked yourself in the bedroom so we could have a chat. I have. I've got four boys home with me. I've had to say to the elder Sebastian, look after Xavier. He's only four. Give him what he wants. He can watch Bluey. He can do whatever he wants, but I've locked the door. So... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see if there's fingers that creep under my door at some stage and fighting, and I'll just mute it for a little bit and let you talk. That's fine. There's been no shortage of children into Gordy's gas bags at various okay. times throughout the videos, so yours will be most welcome. <laughs> Not by um, me. Let, yeah, let's go straight to COVID. Uh, what a bloody shock! What a shock, huh? I I think for us leading into this. At the beginning, we'd gone to play Collingwood and a few days later, we got home and got the call from the hotel we were staying in to say, you may need to go into quarantine because the Formula One drivers were staying at your hotel. So for us, it was a bit of a, oh, I can't, you know, not really. After that, that's when we just went, well, this thing's serious and Mm. we may not play. So yeah, who would have ever thought, huh, that this would ever happen? I know, I know. And just prior to us recording, when I said, how are you going? G'day, Bryony, how are you going? You said, you're over it. Yeah, I've loved the reset. I've loved going through my cupboards, cleaning out stuff, organising the boys. Now I'm like, let take me back to work. I'm like, even one or two days a week, I just, you know, I love it. And I, I really, I've really missed it. Just probably the last two weeks. Yeah. Because I kind of yeah. like being at home, but now I'm ready to go... Let's get stuck into this. Yeah, I know. I think we're all starting to feel that the novelty is wearing off. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey, hey, before we go and talk all things Suncorp, Super Netball and Swifts and whatnot, and we will get there, let's go back because you're a bit of a gun player yourself. I remember your days. No, don't shake your head like that. But why? But do you know what I find really interesting, though, is that, you know, like you, you look at it and you go, look at the crop of players that you came through with. I mean, it was a tough time to make a powder blue team. It's always a tough time to make a powder blue team. But, I mean, you had some intriguing teammates along the way. Yeah, I I think, you know, thank you for that compliment. But I think I was (laughs) surrounded by some amazing players that sort of dragged me with them. Um, Yeah, for that era, I'd look back and just go, wow. You know, Lizzie and Kath and Selena Gilson and, and... for that, New South Wales talent, um, New South Wales never lost. So mm. in that period of success, it was, you know, the pathway was awesome and we were doing some really oh, good yeah. stuff. I oh, love the dog in the background. Bailey, I love it. Come here, come here. Oh, no, Bailey doesn't want to come here. Sit down. She falls, falls asleep when I was boring. Yeah. <laughs> My um, yeah, it was tough, but I did love playing. I love playing with them, and yeah, I, I do look back with lots of fond memories and good times. Yeah, it's. I mean, I mean, I know you're really good friends with with Coxie and with Lizzie, and and I'll, I'll we'll we'll talk about that now because I actually think it's a really nice thing how when you came in and you you took over the the Swifts, and and this has not been. I mean, this has been everywhere, so I'm not telling a new story, but. You were really adamant that you wanted that true tradition and history and culture to come back to the club and you picked the phone up immediately, didn't you? Yeah, I did. And I think, you know, sitting back and watching when I wasn't coaching, I always supported the Swifties and I was obviously coaching those lower levels. And for me, they had lost their way a little bit in terms of what it meant to wear the red dress. And, you know, Liz and Kath have been awesome. Whenever I've needed, you know, 
just a little note sent to the team or, you know, just even advice around leadership and what that used to look like, having them, you know, to be able to bounce ideas off, like best in the world. Mm. Um, and, and they've been super supportive, even though they never backed us, which is fine. Keep doing it, guys, next year. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, but they were always super supportive behind the scenes you know, great friends and the fact that I always refer back to the legacy of the Swifts. We may not win, but I still want them to play the spirit of the game in what I know it was all about when it started. Yeah, well, you've done, you certainly have done that, my friend, without a doubt. Hey, uh, growing up, you you had, did you have any idols? Like, you know, when you, like, you look and you think as a young kid, I'm looking up, who, who was the netball standout for you? Yeah, I was a bit of a netball nerd. I loved watching, you know, State League used to be played on a Saturday and I'd make my mum leave me there all day so I could watch. And oh. at that time, I could watch Sue Kenny. She'd come from Ranwick and play Borkham Hills and Sue Kenny, Carissa. I laugh because you've had all these people on that I've watched when I was growing up. And I think I showed you this just before. I know. This, this was me in the 91 World Champs and Borkham Hills were the cheerleaders for Borko. So Who, I, who's the long, so, so it's you, it's you. It's Vicky and a, a girl came, Vanessa LaShawn, who played in right. the Firebirds, actually. She's probably going to kill me because I didn't tell her I was going to show this. But, <laughs> yeah, I've got one with Carissa, with Sue, very funny. But New South Wales had such great talent to look up to. So, yeah. you know, you always wanted to be at that top level. And, yeah, so definitely <laughs> Sue Kenny. I loved her. And so did, cause, well, and I haven't spoken with Sue's yet, and I must do that, but... I look at Sue Kenny and she was that player that, uh, you know, transitioned across the line so exceptionally well. Did you model your game on her when you, when you played, when you were coming through or was it something else or yeah, no? I, think I, tried. I started as a goal attack and yeah. then I, I distinctly remember, I mean, I was never fast, but I was, I was kind of clever. I could work the ball in. Mm. And when I got told by Maria Lynch that if you want to go further in this game, you're way too short, change positions. Yeah. Obviously, Sue was that player and she had magic hands and you know, her, Nat, I know you've spoken about Nat on here, um, played with Nat in um, State League. Mm. And just her making you get to the space that she wants you in, you just, you just got there. Yeah. And, yeah, those, those sort of players, just even playing with – and I, I think – I'll just go back a step. I had a talk with our training partners and I was sort of wanting them to go and watch old school netball. Yeah. And for me, I said, you need to go back and watch these these athletes that we used to go and turn up and play state league as, you know, 16-year-olds were playing Carissa and the yeah. Randwick and Healy and we were so arrogant to think we could win. And we used to get flogged by 50. But yeah. the fact that I could turn up to Anne Clark at Lickham in New South Wales and play these superstars, um, yeah, just so cool. Huge. We got whipped every week, but it was so fun. It, it's, um, uh, it's and I don't know how I put this across, but, like, I think we just all came through an era when I've been chatting with everyone where we're just so appreciative of the group before us. And it's not to say that the modern-day player isn't, but they are so wrapped up in you know, what is such a, a full-on program and and um, and in an experience of netball that sometimes I get nervous that they kind of have forgotten about yesteryear. Yeah, I, I know it probably doesn't always look like it, but we do always talk about going directly to the post, getting rid of... I've heard you say so many times on, mm. on these chats about direct play and their mm. vision and, you know, you don't have to take every second pass. And... I don't think you can learn that unless you actually see it, right? Yeah, because okay. because they're fitter, faster, stronger, all that sort of stuff. I think they're amazing athletes and they are still intelligent netball players. But I think the game back then was a bit slower, mm. but smart, so mm. smart. And my players probably get sick of me talking about the old days. They probably <laughs> like roll their eyes and here she goes again on her little rant. But, yeah, I, I think... That, that legacy is huge with how successful we've been. So why wouldn't we want to play like that internationally as well? Well, yeah, across the board. Oh, gee, did you just say the word internationally? Yeah. You see, because I look, I don't have any agenda when I talk on these, so I just wait for you to say something and I think, oh, there's a little segue into the next one. So yeah, I'm right. now jumping to the end of this, but we're, we're, not, le we're not leaving here anytime soon. So yeah, yeah. I want to talk about your decision to come in and... and uh, with the Swifts, but you just said internationally. Are you applying? You're not. No. Why not? No. Um, 
to be honest, I think I still have loads to learn. So, you know, there's some great coaches out there that have, you know, been doing this a lot longer than I have. And, you know, I took this Swifties job, you know, not expecting to be coaching the Swifts. So, you know, in this, in this time period. So I haven't applied. So that's a, that's a scoop. Swifties, I told you I wasn't applying. Um, I haven't, but I'm super supportive of every other coach that put, puts it out there. Yeah. And I, I, I love the Swifts. I love the red dress. And, you know, for me, having four kids, a young family and um, a husband that we own three hairdressing salons and yeah, it's, it's, super, it's super busy now. So, you know, whoever gets that job, that is just a massive job and probably taking the role now in the circumstances of where we're at and, you know, the pressure to win is huge. Um, and, yeah, I'm just super happy in Swifty land and learning a lot. Anita Keelan is fantastic. She's um, been around a long time and has sort of helped me in this high-performance environment. So, no, it's not me, but I wish whoever is going for it the best of luck. All the, all the very best. So let's let's have a look at your coaching. I, I, no, hold on, let's pause that for the moment. I want to go back to this before where you said, you know, you, you might often ring Liz Ellis up or Coxie up or whatever, particularly maybe around the topic of leadership. So are you telling me you think Liz Ellis was a good leader or just a pain in the ass? No, she was a bit of both. She, she, people were scared of Lizzie. Uh, I, I remember coming into the team and thinking you would not want to drop a ball with Lizzie at all. And we'd well, sort what, of, what would happen? What would she do? Uh, I just I remember a few instances in training where we'd be just doing this basic drill. If you drop the ball, she would let you know about it. She would be like, no more. And then we had the good cop, bad cop. You'd look at Reagan Gilmore yeah. um, and you'd look at her and she'd be the one just to look at you and go, just breathe it, all okay. But, you know, all jokes aside, the year we won in 2001, I remember her saying, this is our year and nothing is going to stop me getting this championship. And you trained like, okay, Liz has said that and we're going to do that. So <laughs> you, you just rose to the standard. But then obviously we all, we all know and love her and we had a great laugh off the court. So you could always rely on Lizzie to get that yeah. winning intercept and, you know, and also have that, that laugh off the court. So, yeah, she, she let a lot of the naughtiness off the court. But, yeah, it was all fun. We know that. Does, does that sort of leadership exist in the modern game? I... I think it's a bit different now. Um, to be honest, when I came into the Swifts and I had my probably my first three months, um, I probably learned a lot what the modern day player will take and won't take. Um, and I probably had to change my style a little bit to sort of go, right, you've really got to work with these players, old school saying, you know, but I, I still think there's a time and place for that to say, you know, that's not acceptable. Mm. And that's one thing that Liz's legacy has shone through in the Swifts is that, I will stop a drill. I used to stop a drill and say, really, is this good enough to win a championship? Mm. Now players will stop. Sam Wallace will stop training and sort of say, is this yeah. the Swift way? So, you know, there, there is a time and a place for both. And I think, you know, Liz's leadership was awesome. And obviously the reflection of the championships that they won under her was great. Mm. You, uh, Julie Fitz was your coach during the CBT era? Yeah, she was. Yeah. She's my only and, coach. Well, well, I was going to say she's she's the only coach you had at that for that time. I've, well, tell me about the relationship with her. Who's yeah, now? Julie, or, you know, your 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 opponent, and not just I your opponent. She's your crosstown rival, my friend. Yeah, it, it is a bit crazy. I very funny though. Only like two weeks ago, we were at the hairdressing salon together. She was in one oh. mirror. <laughs> And our social distancing and I was on the other. And, yeah, we were talking all through, you know, Jules and I get along really well. And I think, you know, things obviously have changed a bit because we are, we're going for that same title. So super, you know, competitive. She's probably one of the most competitive people I've ever met. Yes. Um, really just so competitive. And I've probably even learnt that more so now that I'm coaching against her. Yeah. Um, but she did make a joke that only, but only, I don't know, a few months ago at a function we were both at. She said, um, we used to be great friends and I'm sure one day after this competition finishes, we'll be great friends again. <laughs> so, and we both had a laugh. And I think at the end of the day, you, it's right. We, we, you know, I don't know and many other codes where your opposition is down the corridor from yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, she obviously works out of the Giants building across the road um, and I am at Netball New South Wales. But... Mm. Jules has done a lot for the sport and, you know, to think that she's still coaching at this level, I'm like, how, I often say to her, how, how do you do, how have you done this for so yeah. many years? 
Mm. And you're still relatively sane, Jules. And, and you know, and, and I mean, again, someone else that we could chat with, but, you know, she's had her setbacks and, and that setback turned into a positive when she went across to New Zealand and then, you know, found her way back here through the Giants. So, you know, what an extraordinary career. Oh, I... I, I just take my hat off to her. You know, she left New South Wales probably thinking what her next coaching job was going to be and, you know, to have success over there and the loyalty of her players, you can just tell by, you know, you know, people that want to be loyal to her and play for her. And yeah, she's done a lot for netball and she's a lot for me. So. And, and could very well be our next diamonds coach. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. She's definitely in that mix. So 100%. I was sort of, yeah, I, I think she's up there and she, she's probably done a lot for the sport to get there. So who knows? So, Brian, when you, so you, you spend all your time, I mean, you're a coach that's come through the pathway and you've ticked your boxes, right? And you, yep. and you, you've had great success uh, with New South Wales in, you know, through the juniors and, the, and then in the A&L. Talk, talk to me about the time when you had to make the decision or, you know, you applied for the Swiss coach. Just that decision-making time, did you feel you were ready? I, I'm... Am I right in saying, and I, I hope I'm not throwing, am I right in saying that maybe there was an offer for you to go and be an assistant alongside Julie at the same time? Yeah, we, we like Jules and I, we, that's what I mean. She, Her and I used to talk every day, used to go to the Giants Cafe and have coffees and talk nothing but netball. And, you know, that was thrown around at the time that, uh, but I was at NSWIS then and I loved that job. Mm-hmm. And I'd only been there for probably 18 months when um, obviously Rob left the Swifts and all these, not all these options, These both these options were there. So um, Jules and I spoke a lot about me taking the Swifts job and versus being an assistant coach and what would be best for my, you know, my balance of my life, if you can ever have a balance. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, she was influential with take, you know, me pushing me to take the Swifts and um, yeah, she, she, she always knew I could. She always said that she wanted to coach against me though, but mm. um, yeah, who knows, who knows what the future holds. And and so when when you took the Swifty with the Swifts on and um, there's there was a lot of talk about this you know with with Rob's departure and I guess the disappointment behind the the playing group at the time but did you step in and have a look at this playing group and go like well done Rob you know like you you've said and you know like you had you had some real decent vision here you know thanks very much. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think when I came into that job, it was pretty scary thinking that I didn't change any of the staff. I had the team obviously was the same. I couldn't change any of the players. Um, I made a choice to keep Anita Keelan there because of her experience. And, you know, she's, she's an awesome coach in her own right. And I knew that she could guide me in the right way. And we kept the performance team the same. But when I walked in there, I knew that if I walked in there thinking that I was going to change everything that ever existed in that place, I would have been out of there in, you know, two weeks, let alone two years. So Rob, Rob, his vision for the players is obviously you know, was outstanding. The fact that he did pick up those young defenders, picked up Sammy Wallace at the World Cup with Anita Keelan. Mm. Um, yeah, so for me, it was, it was going into that camp not to change the world. I did make a lot of changes in terms, like just cultural stuff around what I thought, Yep. I sh- you know, we should where we should be heading, getting rid of that young, inexperienced tag that I think became an excuse to lose yep. um, and just changing that belief. But, yeah, he, he did a great job and I often... I often sort of go, hmm, things happen for a reason, whatever that is. But yeah. Well, the reason was that they bought you a championship, mate, and you, based off the back of you stepping in and taking it to a new level. So well done, without a doubt, to you. I want to ask you some, give us some insight to these Swifts kids. Who Who is an absolute nightmare to coach? Oh, and I mean Sophie a nightmare Garvin. in the nicest way. Sophie Garvin. Sophie Garvin, for <laughs> sure. Why? She, she, Oh, I can be talking and I start laughing because I look at her and I could be really serious, but she'll just make fun of what I've just said or some funny comment. And no, she is very funny in her own right. And she's probably going to get a big head watching this. So um, no, but they all feed, they've got this great energy all together. And um, yeah, she's definitely one that will come in and lighten the mood, but can switch like that into being right. What do we need to do? Yeah. Yeah, and I think she's improved out of sight. So, 
Yeah. Well, I was. Well, that was going to be my next question. Under your coaching, who do you think's taken the quantum leap? Oh, um, I don't. Cause I don't. I don't know if I could single out a single person. I think obviously Sarah Cloud and Maddie Turner's combination has built mm. like they're built beautifully together, and that was always going to happen. Um, but I think Maddie Turner's a bit of an unsung hero for me. Mm. She she doesn't get the limelight that some other defenders get. But you know, obviously in this time of isolation, I've watched a little bit more of our round games, and you know, there's key moments every week that she you know contributes to that I go, wow, that was Turner. You know, in that shooters get lots of glory, but I think she yeah, sets she, the ball in motion, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah she's just mm. she just goes about her business. She's a netty nerd as well, knows all the netty gossip. So yeah. yeah, she's always she's always good to ring and go. What's going on? What what frustrates you most about the Swifts? Frustrates me. Um, I think sometimes the fact that they are such good friends. Um, on and off the court can be a bit of a challenge, obviously, because they live together as well, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think that can be work against them sometimes. Um, but most of the time, I think they're getting better with age, obviously, at, um, you know, getting right what they have to get right and working on stuff. So, yeah, they're, not much frustrates me, to be honest. I think what's super cool is that they've, they just bought into my vision, you know, yeah. but they've challenged me when I, you know, when they think I'm wrong, which I love. Um, I've, I've handled that better, which is great. Um, yeah. But they've got smart netball brains and you just got to buy into that with them because they're good at what they do. So the, this for me is without a doubt uh, the burning question around the Swifts and, and it goes and to you, and I haven't had a chance to ever have this discussion with you. Um, how, worried are you or how nervous yeah. might you be around keeping this group together yeah obviously yeah it's a great question I think we we do talk about it a lot um we also I I know that realistically you know half the team this is not their home mm. so for me someone like Kate Eddie who did a great job for us for two years obviously went back to Vic and you know I'd never begrudge any of those players that would go home because home is your home um, and, you know, those coaches who have brought you up have obviously, you know, guided you. And for me, yeah, I'm always thinking what if they go home and what is next, right? So I, I, don't, I don't miss that opportunity to look at the New South Wales talent and, you know, nothing lasts forever. Um, but I've said to them, if you can, we can stay together just for a few more years, who knows what can happen? And, you know, someone like Helen Howes, people talk about her as the best in the world in, in her position. I still think, in an all due respect to her, she's still got a lot to learn. Yeah. So she, yeah. she started late, really, in netball terms. So, you know, I challenge her and Sammy Wallace every week to say, you have so much to learn. Like, mm. you know, you're, you're, you're pretty good now. You've, you've got a, you know, Com Games medal and an SSN medal, but what could you you know, even they feed off each other to say, what could we do if we all stay together, guys? Yeah. But it's professional sport, so uh, who knows? Well, and, you know, like, as you, as you say that about Sammy and, and Helen, I, I, it just it kind of endears my heart because I think, how lucky are we to have this Suncorp, well, <laughs> Suncorp Super Netball, um, where Helen Housby and Sam Wallace are talking about being, you know, the world's best shooting combination and yet one's from Trinidad and Tobago and the other from England. It, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, and I, and I put Soph Garvin in there because I think in that grand final, putting Soph Garvin out there mm. was not, you know, oh, a sympathy vote for Sophie Garvin. Mm. You know, when she came on, I think we were two up, took Correct. Helen off yep. and then Sophie Garvin comes on, we're eight and nine up. Mm. So I think the three of them, if they can stay together mm. and, you know, keep building it, their game and being a little bit more versatile to play both positions, then, yeah, you're right, though. I, I think it's great for netball. I just think it's super cool that it's become this international competition. And, and if you're good enough, you're good enough and you'll make it. So, you know. Tell me, when you look across, uh, when you look across the league, if you could coach one other player, like let's just say, and this is no offence to the group that you've got, but if you could get your hands on another player, who would you love to coach? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me this. Well, and I think because it's kind of intriguing. Like, I mean, I, surely yeah. you can look beyond your own means and go, gee, not to say that she no, would fit in. I admire, I admire a lot of people. I, I admire a lots of the players out there. I, I love Steph Wood. Mm. I think, you know, she... Brian? 
yeah, she's so smart. And I love smart. And I think, you know, I think netball went off its way a little bit and then picked the most athletic looking people and the fastest and strongest. And I'm not saying that she's not that, but she just brings a different element to a game that I go, wow, you actually, I can't teach that stuff. Yeah. And Steph for me can come on and just turn a game. And I sit back sometimes and I go, whoa, yeah. love it. Yeah. You know, and I, I love that style of player. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, she's one that, you know, she's obviously been a Swift, right? So I missed that chance. But, um, yeah, no, she, she seems really cool and a great player. So talk to me, how, how have you been coping? Like what's um, every club's been placed, uh, every club's got their own predicament, I guess, but under the umbrella of the, what the players are and aren't allowed to do in terms of their restrictions with regards to contract. We know they've taken their 70% pay cut. How have you, under the New South Wales Swifts, managed that and managed the players and how's it all going? Yeah, to be honest, I think the girls have enjoyed going home for a bit and being able to train in their own environment. We've got the South Australians went home, yep. um, except for Sarah Cloud. Nat Haythenthwaite's gone back to England. Yep. Um, yeah, they've, they've got their programs at the moment. They're allowed to do seven hours a week under the, the agreement that they've made. So, yeah, they're, they're all set up at home with their gyms. We've, we've been doing some Zoom bike sessions. Yep. Um, <laughs> in which the girls found out that I actually had a bike and right. now are asking if I'm actually doing it because I will block the screen when right. they're doing it. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't do the first couple, but Friday I did and I nearly died. Right. And then I made my boys do the Pilates session with the girls and the, the three, four of us were dying in the lounge room try, doing this Zoom, but I put them in front of the video and me to the side, You'd probably just see my arm trying to do this. Yeah. stuff uh, yeah and we do trivia tuesdays we um nice. our, our sports site runs our trivia tuesdays so yeah i think um yeah we're, we're trying to keep things as connected i think yeah. is the word yeah and i think the longer this goes on that's what i'm worried about is their mental state mm -hmm. especially like helen and sam who have no family around them and yeah. obviously can't just get in the car and go and drive so just staying connected to them and yeah just doing the best we can well, yeah, and, and so I just I just posed to you, because none of us have the crystal ball and we don't know, but we're all, everyone's conversations, I believe, in the last week or so have started to shift to, I guess, a more positive outlook before the end of season 2020 for the league to come back. How does that place someone like you with, let's say, Nat Haythamthwaite, her capacity to be able to get back into the country if in fact we get a green light a little bit earlier than expected but our borders remain closed yeah i, I think it's we're in a bad position to be honest I, yeah. I i don't i don't know if those internationals will be able to come back and you know nat god bless her has been texting every day sort of asking you know do i have any news and mm. i'm like i actually actually don't and yes, I, I am a bit worried for the game i know probably six or seven internationals have gone home so yeah, well, it's tough. I, you know, I pray that those borders will reopen. And I think the only saving grace, if we get rugby league up and running or AFL, some other sports, maybe they'll be able to come back. Um, but reality is not looking great no. at this stage. So yeah, it's tough, isn't it? You know, you, you can just, I don't know. I have no answers to that. And, yeah. you know, I just pray that Natty can come back and have another season with us. I want to ask you how you're feeling because, you know, we place a lot of focus on, on the players and that, but as a coach, uh, the brain doesn't stop ticking. Um, and as a coach, we like to control a lot of things, you know, that, that, that tends to be an underlining nature of a lot of coaches. Um, are you like, is this, are you struggling? Um, I'm, I'm not, I don't think struggling is the right word. I think I can, we connect every week in with our performance team. So for those that don't know, that's just everyone involved in Swift's land off the yep. court. And I think for me, how I operate normally is my guys go and do that. They're the best at what they do. So I've let Lucas and Yoey, our um, S&C, and sort of run that. Yep. Um, but I did say we just had a meeting just before I was speaking to you and I sort of said, right, time to get serious because I think the light at the end of the tunnel is there. What does that look like for the timeline of our athletes? So just getting more information to them around training, 
Um, but if I, if I don't have, if we didn't have this, we had to talk to each other like we do just on zoom and have a laugh, then I think I would struggle. I think, um, now that I can see a light that we're talking dates, you know, when are we coming back and whatever that looks like, at least there is a date. Whereas before I was like, what if we don't get to play netball at all? Yeah. You know, what's yeah. this going to do for our game? So. Oh, don't, yeah. well, don't say that. It, uh, it's frightening to even think about. No, it is. It, it is. is. Absolutely. Um, mate, very good to have a chat with you. Uh, and it's actually, it's been really good because this will give everyone a bit of an insight into, you know, the Suncourt Super Netball team and, and, and whatnot. So I think that's great both for you and Simone. I'm really appreciative that both of you have accepted and said that you'd come on. Um, I'll just quickly take you back before we finish with what I know will be your favourite part of this episode. But I'll just before quickly... I leave and let the four-year-old in, is that what you meant? Oh, yeah. And his fingers are at the door, by the way. I can yeah. hear him. Oh, really? Excellent. Yeah. Yes. So I want to take you back. So in linking with the fact that you're going to have to do some karaoke for me, I have no doubt that in those moments when the Swiss won and held up trophies and you all went out and celebrated, there would have been some serious singing done by yourself and the girls during that time. Do you know, to be honest, we, we went back into that change room. I think I was actually silent. I oh. actually couldn't believe <laughs> we, we bloody won it. And I remember we had, a, we had champagne. I don't even know where that came from. Yeah. And I sort of sat there and I, I was sort of like dumbfounded. Like just the girls would sing our Swiss song and I would clap. But I actually think, I'm not even here. I'm just like, got back to the hotel. We had a party ready. Uh, we literally sat and I went, I think I just need a cup of tea. I yeah. just, <laughs> oh, it was such a relief I was like oh we've done it I can't believe we've done this right and yeah I'm sure there was scene but it's a bit of a blur I just I just wanted to sit and go oh I just need to save it this may never happen again does that Swift songs that you sang then still exist in the club today yeah 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 it goes like how like always a swift. A, oh, I still don't even know the words. It's, oh, it's are you sure it's your bloody club song? Oh no, we have two. We have oh. one when we win, and then oh. Maddie Proud gets these tunes in your head that she just sings stupid stuff, and it gets oh. stuck in your head all day. And we are talking about Maddie Proud, and therefore that does not surprise me. Yeah, yeah. Maddie Proud. <laughs> Writing another book. I'm sure you've heard oh. it fifty thousand times. I don't reckon that I should be getting royalties from that kid for the amount of time I have promoted Grace <laughs> on the court. There's another one, Maddie Proud, dropping it right in here on Gordy's cash bags. Grace on the court. Number two. Number two. I know it's crazy. I'd be a millionaire, I'm sure. Uh, right, kiddo. Karaoke time. What do you got for me? So I don't have one. We well, have to have one. Otherwise, I'm going to delete this bloody episode. Well, I was thinking like girls just want to have fun. Well, that's or fine by me. me. But you have, to, you have to sing with me, be like just a little bit of it. Okay. All right. Well, well, what I'll do, I'll tell you what I'll do for you. I'll say yes that I'm going to sing with you. Like I say yes to everybody on Gordy's Gas Bags that says, okay, will right, you sing right. with me? And then if you notice, I go mute. And I'll, I'll start singing and then it's over and done with because this is the only part that I've worried about with this interview. Really? Well, how about I get Bailey? Bailey, come here, darling. Come here. Come on. Up here, come. Come on, 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 Briny Akel, terrific stuff having a chat with you. I mean, I have said it to you before, but congratulations on an extraordinary start to your high performance coaching and, and with the Thank suit, you. what you did. So many, you know, we mightn't have backed you in, but we love the fact that you won. That's, you know, like when I say we didn't back you in because we thought the lightning might have taken it out, but we dearly loved it. And I celebrated hard for you, darling. Don't worry about that. So Thanks, Sue. You're a legend. Unreal. Really good. All the very best. And hopefully got we'll see you on Suncorp Super Netball Court in season 2020. We can only hope. We can only hope. Champion. Thanks, guys. See you.